it, it has a rev limiter, but it'll flash. It'll the whole thing will go. That's blah, 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 Greg. Blah. And then, that's Greg. I know that guy. All right, there's the limitations of a three cylinder at the top end. Hmm. It sounds so good. <laughs> so, okay, it's very interesting. It almost has. You said before, like, like a V6 feel. Yes. It has larger engine torque. Yes. And the red line, I was expecting for a three-cylinder to be up at 8,000 RPM. It has the yellow line at six, six and a half, or so really 7,000 RPM. Um, all right, it will pull in sixth. Yes. Probably yep. because it's a larger displacement at 1.6 liters for three cylinders. Yep. Is that, is that Greg? This episode of Regular Car Reviews is sponsored by Factor. Factor makes meeting your nutrition goals easier than ever by delivering fresh, never frozen, dietitian approved meals right to your doorstep. Their team of gourmet chefs create each meal using only ingredients with integrity to help you feel your best all day long. I meal prep all the time. I have lots of Tupperware. I have lots of rewashed Chinese takeout containers. Do you need help with calorie conscious options for this summer? Try delicious dietary and approved calorie smart meals with around or less than 550 calories per serving. Stop using apps to get fake food. That's a mistake. I mean fast food. You have to eat better. I get it. You don't have time. Well, this gives you flavor packed options on the menu each week to fit a variety of lifestyles. Vegan, veggie, protein plus. These will make you feel satisfied all day long while meeting your goals. Stop drinking soda. Drink these smoothies. You can use the oven like I'm using, but these things also work in the microwave. So head to factor75.com or click the link below and use code REGULAR40 to get 40% off your first Factor box. Once again, head to factor75.com or click the link below and use code REGULAR40 to get 40% off your first Factor box. 2022 Toyota GR Corolla. Yes! The weirdness is back! Ever since Toyota got religion back in 2004, cut off ties with the MR2, and, you know, stopped partying, remember what Toyota's been doing for the longest time? They've been sending BMW and Subaru to ragers in their stead. And not in a funny MF Doom way. More like, uh, and please forgive me, this is the most accurate description I can think of. More like a Shabbat's Goy way. Yeah, Toyota, you're following the rules, but are you? Are you really? But Toyota, you're back! Making weird cars that only appeal to hyper dicked exhibitionists and Wall Street Boys. They could have made a four-cylinder turbo like everybody else. Nope! Three-cylinder. Is the displacement smaller than your average 1.5-liter four-cylinder? Nope! 1.6. Here, have an extra 100 cc's because we're going to push back from the gate, get underway, and if you would look out your window, you'll see something on the tarmac. It's me, standing by the fuel truck. I'm jerking off. And you're all going to watch me come. I'm Toyota, and I'm off my meds again. This is the car that should be wearing the 8.6 badge, not the BRZ family. Now, I have nothing as, I have nothing against the FRS or BRZ lineage. It's a wonderful sports car, and it demonstrates the flexibility of Subaru's engines and drivelines. It was a good car. It was a good enough car. That boxer coupe is Pepsi when all you want is Coke. It's American Pale Ale when all you want is an IPA. It's Timex when you want Seiko. It's Route 309 when you really wanted 476. It's going to the Lehigh Phantoms game when you really want to go see the Flyers. But now we have the genuine article. A 100% Japan-built economy car turned sports car by way of selectable power delivery buys up to 70% rear. The legacy of the A86 was it was a practical hatchback as well as a sports car. The FRS was never practical aside from being tall people friendly. The GR Corolla is, underneath, still a hatchback. Yes, modern designs force the hatch to be streamlined, cutting into the small cargo area, 
And yes, all-wheel drive raises the floor of the cargo area to accommodate half shafts for the rear wheels. And yes, the race-style front seats rob passengers of legroom, but it's still a hatchback, like the original AE86. These tailpipes are goofy. I don't like them. Three of them. Three cylinders, get it? Get it? I'm about to announce to everyone in the slow lane that I'm passing you with only three cylinders. The only way this this exhaust would impress me is if Toyota made a wonderful three into three header and exhaust combo. But no, it's just a normal exhaust manifold that splits into the dumps after the shared muffler. That's like handing in a first draft paper as a final draft, but retconning some garbage drafts out of it to make it look like you've been working on researching the Erie Canal all semester. They made it a screamer up top, but just to appease the people who paid $45,000 for this thing. I know MSRP is, is lower, but let's be honest, dealers are going to deal. All the power is low and mid. I was disappointed that there's nothing up near the top of the red line but noise and boasting. Maybe I'm hitting boost cut and the stock tune is protecting the engine. Most of the fun happens below 4,900 RPM. Maybe that's the fault of three larger cylinders instead of four smaller ones. But this may be bro science as well. The legacy of the A86 still pushes through Corolla generations like Leto Atreides II reaching for the golden path. The GR Corolla has a more comfortable ride than the Civic Type R and a much better ride than the Focus RS. But don't worry. People are going to put Alibaba coilovers on the GR and make it ride nice and reprehensible. Social media relies on the self-hypnosis of users. Users pour their own identity into their consumed content while knowing said content is staged, cropped to exclude the whole image, and displayed to serve either personal or corporate brands. Oxford literary professor Christopher Butler said, The Nietzschean assumption that all such phenomena, from statements from the White House to everyday soap operas, are more or less secretly in the service of the maintenance of power, economic or other, of somebody or other, rather than made in the service of any truth. It has led to a particularly paranoid strain in postmodernist theory and art. Butler wrote that in 2002. Now in 2023, you'll hear men say, Nothing means anything anymore. Nothing is real. Everything is spin. It's all corporations and opposing political party and opposing social group trying to take over. This is so often heard from people suffering under the weight of postmodernism and hyperreality in 2023. More specifically, people who don't have a mattress of philosophy to bounce back from. And people who freak out over Toyota's Chad Bradford-style sidearm three-cylinder pitch are often the same people who go into a grocery store and smash all the Bud Light. Those people need a philosophical tumbling mat, too. Nietzschean morality is only as right as its profitability, which cram associated. And if that's not yet a coined term, cram associate, a more aggro version of free association, I'm coining it now. Cram association, which I will now define. Cram association, forcing a connection between two unrelated discourses by way of authorial intention. There it is. Cram association. Cram ass. <laughs> the GR Corolla will only be moral. It will only be correct. It will only be a correct build if it is profitable. Because I never agreed with the rear-wheel drive Toyota brews. But uh, hump me if they didn't make bank from both companies. Nietzschean morality and beyond good and evil justifies results. It doesn't matter if a three-cylinder is, by nature, unbalanced and makes a noise like a gamer PC with noisy fans and loose mounting screws. If the GR Corolla is faster than your Mazda 3, the GR Corolla is correct. The Honda Beat proves this. That's a three-cylinder car. It's beloved in the United States, even though it was never released here. Humankind, according to Nietzsche, is only judged by results. And the same goes with the GR Corolla. 
I love this machine. Toyota still cares about making a fun car. A nerd's car. Nerd! But if Toyota doesn't send this product out on the streets to make its money back, the GR Corolla will only become a martyr. The GR Corolla will charge up the marketing hill valiantly and be slaughtered valiantly. And enthusiasts in tall hats and gold watch fobs will thump their chests and say what a brave charge Toyota made with the GR. Because this GR still needs an average person to buy it. And that's infuriating to enthusiasts. Because the thoughts of the average, unremarkable people are, according to Nietzsche, they just don't matter. Because they don't produce. The men smashing Bud Light cans don't matter because they're poor. They didn't buy those things wholesale. We, according to Nietzsche, don't have to pay attention to them. They don't make or put aside disposable income to buy a weird Toyota. Average people, they're not earners, according to Nietzsche. Suffering has no meaning for them. And to believe that suffering has meaning makes suffering even worse. But the joke is that Nietzsche asks us to question our convictions, but Nietzsche himself didn't have the intellectual capacity to challenge his own beliefs. Like so many culture war warriors, there is no authority, just endless views that can never blend. Because at night, all cows are black, and whatever value we have, we create it. It wasn't bestowed upon us from on high. We're creating the value for the GR Corolla. Even though it came from arguably the richest automotive company in the world, we're still the final say in this machine. And I think a lot of the opposition to the GR Corolla comes from the obnoxious numbers they make. Other manufacturers are like, Mom, Toyota's getting weird again. They're making a performance Corolla hatchback for no reason, Mom. It makes like 300 horsepower and 275 pound-feet of torque, and it's like not fair because that's what a Bugatti makes per liter, and we can't compete with that. All other car companies are going to make fun of me because I'm getting beat by a Corolla and then I won't be around the birthday parties. Do something. So look, if you're going to become a Toyota fanboy, it's best you do it with a car like this because it's completely made by Toyota without any sort of collaboration or outside sourcing. Because Toyota does have the freedom to do what they want to do without any oversight. And when they do do that, it's always better. It's like going to a mom-and-pop burger joint that can change up the fat-to-meat ratio in the grinder or, altering the, or alter the seasoning mixture because they're not a franchise with corporate and no one tells them what to do. They can make their own choices. The Corolla GR is basically the Toyota burger. So anyway, let's talk about this torque split. You can either have a 50-50 split, you know, front and rear with power. You can have 60% front and 40% rear. Or you can have what everybody likes, 30% front and 70% rear. You also get torsion limited slip differentials while simultaneously giving you the biggest set of brakes ever on a Toyota, even better than a Tundra. But we're not talking about that one Toyota. We'll get to that. But it's still a car that's separate from the modern norm. It's got a mechanical wastegate, mechanical parking brake, thank you. A generally more tactile feel than contemporary automotive design usually allows for. It's contradictory. From its oversized radiator to its tiny little intercooler, from its rear view camera to the realization that that camera is just potato vision with backup lines that don't adjust to your movements. From the cheap feeling doors that give Corolla hybrid vibes to the claustrophobic interior space that reminds you that interior space just wasn't a Corolla hybrid problem. But all these negatives are outweighed not only for what the GR Corolla offers, but from the charm of its weirdness. A Toyota MasterTech puts a signature on every motor. It's built in a cell instead of an assembly line. It's built in the same factory as the GR Yaris and... 
Uh, the LFA. Fewer than 7,000 were made, and they only come in red, white, and black, like a tablecloth at a corporate picnic, or a pair of Nikes with the retail markup of a Jeep Wrangler. You're not getting anything new with this styling. Aesthetically, it has the look and feel of a rental car from one of those really good agencies at the airport. It's kind of like Chinese takeout Tupperware. It feels simultaneously expendable, but too good not to hold on to. I swear my parents' dishwasher is filled with circular plastic Chinese takeout Tupperware. We can use it again! Because it does its job really well, and it's going to last you way longer than the ones that you get from the nice restaurant that fall apart after a single use. It's exactly the kind of Toyota people have missed for years. But unlike a sweater after a bad breakup, we're actually getting weird Toyota back. Hell, keep the sweater. Just leave me the Corolla. You just get dumped by a sentient cloud of Axe body spray, and now he's refusing to give back the No Doubt shirt you let him borrow as a pillowcase? Do you want to give back the electric razor you never used but left in your shower with the battery casing exposed? Then Romance Repo is here to help you! Romance Repo is a moving company comprised of three guys in a Jeep Wrangler. For a modest down payment and then an additional fee of twice that, we'll go pay your ex a visit and get back everything you left there. And even rough him up a little, although you didn't hear that from us. Phone charger? Repo! Pet rabbit? Repo! Tropical houseplant? Repo! Teenage son? Repo! Nissan Altima? You're on your own. But don't think we ain't got the fellas covered. We're Jeep guys. We don't discriminate. You got an ex who's claiming you're packing a Vienna sausage when you're actually carrying around a bologna chode so substantial it's leading to quality of life problems? We'll make threatening phone calls from an untraceable number so she, could, she goes to stay with the mother and then we'll go and get all the stuff back. But you didn't hear that from us. Nose hair trimmer? Repo. Ball hair trimmer? Repo. Woody wrench? Repo. Allen Wrench? Repo! Woody Allen Wrench? You're on your own, brother! We'll get back anything you need. Comic books, flashlights, lift kit, power drill, the, even a 2023 Toyota Corolla GR. You know, we might actually keep that one for ourselves, but you didn't hear that from us. And if you did, no you didn't. But that's not all. Do you need stuff taken back to an ex you're not interested in seeing again because you end up getting to talking and one thing leads to another and you're right back where you started, having to explain to your friends to just forget about all the trash talking you were doing at Chili's the other night when you thought she was out of your life for good? Consider contacting our sister business. Heartbreak haulers! We'll come pick up the old MacBook she uses for the makeup YouTube channel she never got around to starting and deliver it straight to us so she can continue never starting it. Ladies, we'll come pick up his old sweater that still smells like weed and we'll take it right back to him, even rough him up a little, maybe dab him up with the two-piece combo, no biscuit. Then he can go back to being higher than Wilt Chamberlain's nutsack. May he rest in peace, go sixes. Get on the horn and call Romance Repo or Heartbreak Haulers today. You let him down easy? And you let us do the hard pot. Oh wait, no, um, romance repo. We make the hard pot soft. No, 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 no. no. Uh, 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 heartbreak haulers. Shattered hot? Let us pick up the pieces. There, that's the one! That's the one! I don't remember who said it. Maybe it was Carl Sagan. Maybe it was Kermit the Frog. But it's said that people look for meaning in symbols and objects because we can't comprehend the possibility of something being made that isn't intended for us to comprehend. A Corolla GR, or GR Corolla, how do you say it? I don't know, is a performance hatchback, but doesn't necessarily feel like it's meant for enthusiasts to get or even an everyday motorist to understand. They totally can, and they probably would love to have this, but it feels like this exists in a kind of in-between space for experienced drivers who haven't yet crossed over the line into performance spaces, or people who might be bored with their daily but not looking for something that they can only bring out of the garage in nice weather. You have great braking, great acceleration, great maneuverability. That's the best part. It's, it's the kind of Toyota that makes all the fanboy tongue bathing make sense. From a psychological standpoint, a Corolla GR delivers speed, which feeds into the idea that we can be more productive and more successful for being prompt. 
Now, does going zero to 60 in 4.9 seconds mean you'll never come across a person with poor impulse control and a stream of curse words that orbit the satellite of an outstretched middle finger? No. And 26.3 PSI of boost isn't going to protect you from people with an over-reliance on sleeping in and a low tolerance for traffic that they should have anticipated. But what it will do is give you the confidence to navigate those challenges because the GR Corolla gives you the agility and maneuverability to think fast and keep yourself safe. Maybe that's giving too much credit for this car or to any fast car, but you'll notice just how fast you can get where you need to go without ever feeling like you're rushing to get there or getting in anybody else's way to do it. The GR Corolla isn't the most eye-popping car in the world, but that's not what a Corolla is. And outside of the A86, it has never been. But it's hard to imagine caring about appearances with an experience this comprehensive. So yes, the GR Corolla is great. And I suppose it's only going to get better as the years and years go on. And like all Toyotas, it will be revered even more after it's discontinued. First you hate me, then you love me. I'm trying to find a way to close this, but this is the most fun car I've driven all year. Aside from having very little cargo space, there's no faults with the GR Corolla. I'm trying to find opposition, but there really is none. So I'll close with this one quote I don't know where to put at all in this narrative. But it's a really good analysis of Nietzschean philosophy. And it goes like this. In the absence of cooperation, the only meaning for the peasant is the elimination of opposition. Whatever opposition the peasant can mentally assemble, or better, opposition created by smarter, more Machiavellian peasants.